YouTube family. I'm Patty Jackson. I am your auntie of pop culture. What do I love to say? It's not cute not knowing. Let's start with a hug. We do the hug because you never know what somebody could be going through. Today is a special day for me. 42 years ago today, I trudged through the snow. It was snowing a lot at that time in Philly. And made it to a radio station in Camden, New Jersey, which was right across the bridge. I did the 1230 News and I was terrible because I sounded like a kid. But they liked me. They worked with me. And I never looked back. I was always in front of a microphone, literally. I was a basketball announcer. I was the school announcer. They would let me bring one record. And this was when hip hop was so new. I had my one little hip hop record, right? I played some of the song and then I would tell you what was going on. I was that kid in church, Afro Puffs, Easter poems, church services, announcement. I, it was me. I wanted to be salt and pepper. I cut my hair off. My father said, why you do that? He said, you got the face for that. The forehead. We got big foreheads in, in, in my family. It runs in the family. Uh, wanted to be Donna Summer, who I just adored. I can't sing. Um, all those things shaped the, who I am today. It really does. Big hair could go out of style. I don't care. I'm going to keep having big hair. But 42 years ago, I got behind a microphone and I never looked back. And I played all kinds of music. Elvis, Frank Sinatra, country, pop, top 40, <laughs> hip hop. There's so many genres. Black music, soul music. I never looked back. Disco music. Never looked back. And I'm so grateful and I must get through this report without crying. It's happy tears. You know, when you're menopausal, it, your emotions, just they're just all over the place. I'm sweating. I can't want to tear up this morning, but I'm happy. It's, it's, it's happy tears. I'm so grateful to every person who helped me along the way. I'm grateful to those who wouldn't help me along the way because that's when you learn that you're going to get it done regardless. My very first day when I came home that night, it was my dad's birthday and I bring up my dad because he would have been 101 today. He didn't want me getting the radio. He was like, what kind of job is that? He was like, you're going to be a token. When I got home, we we celebrated his birthday with all of my favorites, collard greens and barbecue. And he said to me, you're gonna be all right. You are, you're gonna be all right. And he didn't know nothing about radio. He was a foreman at the Navy Yard in Philadelphia. <laughs> oh, I miss him, miss him. I am a product of my parents, the blending. My nose, everything. I'm a product. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful to you guys, um, this journey, because th this is life after stroke. This is this is life after stroke. I didn't get in the radio to do videos. I'm a radio head, I'm a radio girl. But this part has been interesting because I love pop culture. And I thank you. The channel is growing. I'm just, um, I'm grateful, y'all. I'm grateful. Let's get into these stories. Like I said, I don't want to start crying. Can you believe that Sports Illustrated is going to be no more? After 70 years, it's the changing of media and print media. At its height, it sold 3 million issues a week. There was that great swimsuit issue. But I, I just can't believe it. I think because everybody gets everything online. But what a great institution. 
Sports Illustrated was, and it's ending after 70 years. Snoop Dogg is speaking out about his daughter. Snoop has a new prime movie that starts on Friday called The Underdogs. He plays a famous NFL player who gets in trouble. Judd said, you're either going to go to jail or teach these kids football. And that's where The Underdogs comes in. Um, he's keeping up with this press commitment. And he was asked about his daughter who suffered a stroke. And he said that it's a little slow when she's having problems with her kidney, but to keep the family in prayer. The Prince Estate is in all kind of trouble. This year, the 40th anniversary of Purple Rain, and then we're going to be doing all this stuff in Minneapolis and at big parties and just celebrating, and then the Prince movie going to Broadway. It is now in serious jeopardy. The infighting with the family, it's that infighting. Some of the family members are like, cash me out, give me my money. They don't really care about the prince legacy or growing. You got people that are in charge of his estate. And they want to see it grow with the events in Minneapolis and Broadway. And because believe it or not, a lot of artists make more in death than they do when they're alive. Prince didn't leave a will. Why did he leave a will? They're fighting. They just want the money. Don't care about the legacy. Mm. The, the people at the, the state, and they only got half of his estate because the other went to primary wave. They want to see it grow. It's in trouble. I don't know what they're going to do this summer with the celebration. Guess who's returning to The Daily Show? John Stewart. This is an election year. And I guess he figures they ain't get a host because Trevor Noah left a year ago. And he took it for, over from John Stewart. Well, John Stewart is coming back and every Monday, starting in February, you're going to see him on The Daily Show. And it's going to be politics, politics, fun politics. But he's coming back. And during the rest of the week, his news team will be the ones filling in. I don't know if they will ever have a permanent host, but Jon Stewart is coming back. Saturday Night Live is going to feature an incredible woman. She's an Emmy winner. She's a Golden Globe winner. She's on the hot new FX Hulu show, The Bear. Her name has been difficult for me, and I, I don't like butchering people's names. The young lady who plays Sydney on The Bear. Ayo, it, it, see, I knew I would do it. Okay. Ayo Itaberry. I've been practicing this woman's name. I hate messing up people's names. But the young lady who plays Sydney is coming to Saturday Night Live. She's going to be hosting on February 3rd. And Jennifer Lopez is going to be her musical guest. Now, it's funny because Jennifer Lopez has hosted Saturday Night Live three times. She's been the musical guest three times. She has this new project, This Is Me, the album. So she's promoting that. And AO is going to be the host. Her background, she used to be a stand-up comedy. Stand-up comic. She was playing on Abbott Elementary, Quinta Brunson's sister. So she's got a background in comedy. And she's got this show, The Bear, which to me is not a comedy. I just... It, it's good, it'll make you hungry, but I just think it was comedy. Anywho, the Emmy and Golden Globe winner, she's coming to Saturday Night Live, February the 3rd. Tyler Perry is quietly back. His name has been thrown about and he's been quiet. Smart move. He's been very quiet. A lot of accusations. Just, just his name has just been in too many people's mouths. But now Tyler is back. He's got a new movie with Kelly Rowland coming on Netflix. Trevante Rhodes. He was in the Billie Holiday movie. He's fine. It's a thriller. And the fact that he's fine, you don't know if he's a psycho killer. 
February 23rd on Netflix, Tyler Perry wrote, produced, directed, Kelly Rowland, Destiny's Child is starring, and you're going to see a lot, but Tyler Perry is back with his projects. No, he's not in it. He's behind the scenes, but this project is coming out on Netflix. Run DMC, The Kings from Queens. It's a new docuseries that's coming to the Peacock Network. I adore Run DMC. Reverend Run, Daryl McDaniels, and the late Jam Master Jay, who was murdered in 2002. What made Run DMC who they are? The great songs. Peter Piper is my favorite. What's yours? It's tricky. Walk This Way. Kings of Rock. They had so many. Wait, Christmas in Hollis. <laughs> it's the best Christmas song. But they had so many hits. But this three-part docuseries talks about how they cemented their place in music history, in hip-hop. A lot of people that you love going to pop up, like MC Light, LL Cool J, Big Daddy Kane, The Beastie Boys, mm, Ice Cube, Dougie Fresh. It's going to be a great docuseries. I'm really excited because I'm just a, I love old school hip-hop and just love, love, love. Run DMC, who really paved the way for those that you see and hear today. Years ago, because they gave the best shows, it was a tour with Run DMC. I was working at Power 99, our sister station here in Ireland, Philly. It was Run DMC, the Beastie Boys, and the Fat Boys. Well, child, the Fat Boys and the Beastie Boys... <laughs> They was wilding out. They were. They were. I was like, I had to turn into, you know, you have to, I, I call it, you have to turn into the black mama. I said, y'all going to have to calm down. You sit over here. You sit over here. It was, it was wild. And all I could think about was they put me in charge of this interview and I, I got to get it. And then I got to like cut it up so they can run it on the air. And this is before the videos. I should have, I wish I could have filmed them acting crazy. But Run DMC was so chill. The Beastie Boys and the Fat Boys, not so much. But it was a fun day. But they came to, what do we call it back in the day? The Spectrum. They came to the Spectrum, and it was a great show. And I think a very young LL Cool J was on that same bill. These shows would just be amazing. But Peacock, everybody, Run DMC, February the 3rd. It's a three-part docuseries. There is still so much anger over those Academy Award nominations. To me, it's overshadowing the Academy Awards. From the director of Barbie being just, can't even consider her, from Margot Robbie. A lot of people are mad, and they're saying because of the message in Barbie about women's empowerment, that it was a slap in the face. I know Ryan Gosling got to be embarrassed because he got two nominations. The outrage over the color purple. A lot of people are still upset. I thought this would be just such a great moment for Fantasia. You know, not to take anything away from Daniel Brooks, because she, the previews, had me excited. But the, but the blame came about why didn't this movie, which is on video on demand right now, did not live up to its expectations. The other day... A great mentor in my life, Susan Taylor. She had this great column in the Spirit and Essence magazine. It was must read. This woman would just fill me with such inspiration and wisdom and understanding. Life can be tricky. There's a book she wrote in the Spirit. It definitely will help you understand when you get no's, when relationships end, how to deal with change. She recently celebrated her birthday. I think she's 80. I was like, but Susan Taylor, I love you. But the book, y'all, is in the spirit because sometimes you're going to read a book that's going to change your life. Subscribe to the channel. Um, give us a thumbs up.
if you like the video. And y'all know y'all can leave a comment. Auntie would love to hear from you. Have a great one. Thanks so much for joining me and letting me, I don't know, how it started. How do we get here? How did we get here? We got here because 42 years ago today, I walked through the snow and said, I'm doing the radio. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Patty Jackson. I am your auntie of pop culture.